Face vs Ends is El Clasico of Counter-Strike, with every time they meet, it will be a good match. And they were no different at the CS Asia Championship 2023, where we saw the greatest BO3 in Counter-Strike 2 yet. With insane clutches, comebacks, sight holds and more. Today we're breaking down the most important rounds from the whole BO3. This best of 3 started on Nuke, a map Face have been some of if not the best team at the moment. But in this BO3, we saw a different Face on Nuke. Ens had gotten a great lead of 4-1, and FaZe has to do something new. And here FaZe are going 3 players to roof, 1 outside and 1 in lobby. And here I like how Rops is doing utility, while Brock sits next to him to drop utility for him. But for Rops to have some utility when you're solo lobby is very important early. While Ens are going 1 player ramp, 1 player A site, 1 main and 2 players outside. This is a very default setup, and I like how both teams has a focus on outside. FaZe throws a lot of utility on A site to try to throw a fake to force an outside player or two to focus A site, so face outside player can try to do a play. And look at outside, this works, this forces ends two players that was outside to fall back. And this is perfect for face. This will allow Twist to walk outside while Rob's using all of this noise that face has created on site and outside to be able to drop went without being seen, but he gets tagged as well as heard by nerds. In the meantime, Ends outside player split up with Sun Payas taking ramp with the op after the other ramp player has to focus for the vent drop to make sure Rops can't get too much map control of the lower parts of Nuke, since there are many ways for Rops to win the round from secrets, like helping Twist outside or doing a double window break to allow him to go ramp unheard. And this leaves Snappy alone outside, and here he wide swings as soon as the smoke Twist is hiding behind starts to fade, and FaZe has gotten the opening kill they needed for this round, and outside control. Only problem is that Rain earlier this round dies to Sun Payas in this amazing position, since he used his great spawn to get here behind red and Rain is not ready, so this kill Twist got was more of a way for FaZe to get back to the round. Rox uses his vent control and B side path to good, and here finds the ramp player going down to hold B and FaZe is back with a man advantage, so what can go wrong? Well, Sun Payas understands that now with Rops taking B site and FaZe going towards ramp, he needs to either get away or try to get a kill or two to give Ens a shot at the round and him not dying without impact. And here he walks into lobby entrance from ramp and finds one nice kill on Brokey with the op and an amazing deagle shot to carry him. All of that FaZe did has now been lost and FaZe has to win it back. And then in lobby, twist tunnel vision to kill the ramp player, allows Madden to come from hut and kill him as well, and Rops in the 1v3 can't do much, and Enz takes a round. Doesn't even matter anymore, but Sampias can close the gap, he's got a chance, Kerrigan, oh! Shut down, and there's the lobby crutch from Madden. Yeah, and Sampias comes back and punishes them, it's Rops alone in a 1v3. And can he undo, can he unravel all of the hard work from Sampias in this round? He's inside of the vent. They had to know there was a player down lower earlier, so they're covering all of that off. But Robs gets up the vent silently. Madden is covering off the backside of some pious. This is one of the best players in Counter Strike 2. Right on your screen. He might show us a clutch here, but it's not going to happen. Madden. Facer back to one player in lobby and then the rest towards outside, with two players throwing utility and then two players going early outside with a cross smoke. While Ens are going one player outside in garage with the op, one player rushing down ramp to go to secret, and then Ens has gotten one player in Africa or the spot under silo, and one main and one A site. So to say Ens are focusing outside would be an understatement. And here Ens setup just makes sense. Face has not been trying to take fast ramp in a while, so why not let it be open? A strategical decision, and then have one player to hold for the vent drop, and if the vent drop never happened, he can walk secret to outside to help, or just walk back to ramp or hold B site. Snappy finds Kerrigan trying to walk out of the cross smoke, and this is done since FaZe throws some utility over Silo, in hope to make the AWP hold that, so Kerrigan can cross. Quite risky, but this works, until FaZe forgot to think that Ens could have gotten a player Africa, but Drake can trade the kill back fast. But FaZe has no good control to have a shot at this round, and that's why we see the outside smokes from FaZe, to try again and force Ens off middle, and again this works, with some Payas going to ramp like the last time, but this time Ens has a secret player, so this will make sure the main player can stay main and hold outside. Face gets ready for A hit, and it's why Rain starts to walk outside towards main. Here Madden can kill him, but Rain had to do this now, since Face are running out. And here he needed to make a decision about either staying outside to rather hold off rotations, or to try and find an opening kill in main for his team. Face finds Madden thanks to Rain's information, and this leaves Nurts alone on sight, with some players coming heaven and Vladen coming from secret, so nerds need to hold until his teammate can trade him. 
A nurse goes huge by getting one kill and then a dink onto Brokey. And sometimes from heaven, in a super risky peak, is gambling face a focusing nurse and here kills Brokey. And Twist in the clutch tries to wait out friends to overpeak, but none of them do. And time runs out and he loses the round. One of the best players are holding this position and he's not alone, he's got Nurt and Sampias in the combo and it's Sampias on the flick down. Nice shot on Brokey. And unfortunately for Twist, it looks like the timing of Vladin is going to be absolutely perfect for the peak and that is going to be the kill to deny. Face are now on the CT side. Anne has started to mount a little comeback being not 12-4 and now it's 12-6 and Anne knows how strong face CT side is. This will scare them. So Ants need something this round. Ants are going 3 players lobby, 1 outside and 1 player in spawn throwing utility for the outside player. And this setup is good, since if the outside player finds a kill or need help, the spawn player can join him. Or if the lobby player finds a kill or need help, well he just joined them. But face are going 2 players ramp, 2 on A side and then 1 outside. And here it's just a game of waiting for mistakes and we can see in lobby that Ants are ready with all 3 players leading towards ramp for this round. And Broken with a great timing unscopes as soon as Ants are about to swing. But his luck turns around as he here hits a nice leg shot for the quick scope. But there's a problem. Face had 2 players in ramp, well one of those has ran down to B site since Ants had been so slow and Face has been played. Then Ants kind of fall apart. With Brokey being able to get 2 kills after being spotted, and this clearly shows a lack of team play by Ants, as well as the outside player on Silo gets found by Robs who is peeking over a smoke, but then we are seeing the lack of team play by FaZe. Since Brokey dies ramp, this leaves a massive opening on the map, and this makes it so Rain wants to try and kill Snappy who is alone outside, and here Snappy alone is able to kill Robs, and from a 2v5 to now a 2v4, and then Rain running back in hope to not leave ramp open for too long, but here misses completely, thinking the smokes would last longer and the duration of them, and Snappy can kill him, and this is just a massive misplay by Rain, and now it's back to a 2v2, and Snappy again, nades main to do some damage to the main player, and here if he hits a player, and here he bonks twist with it, and he's able to find twist, and now from a 2v5 to a 2v1, and this was just a lack of face team play and map control. But Kerrigan in the 1v2 does something amazing on the match point. He understands it's not B, so he runs through vent with a flash that allows him to get up vent without ends holding, and then using his positional advantages to be able to win the round. Kind of amazing to see face go from useless to then Kerrigan making this round amazing. So this is what you get when you watch the whole round and not just the highlight. Oh, for heaven. And Carrigan flying up event, making no secret about his arrival. And he's taking damage. They already have eyes on him. And he really will struggle to get any closer to this site. Nurts and Snappy doubled up together. How does he approach this? Through the avenue of Hutt. Snappy's down. Now a 1v1. Carrigan against Nurts and Carrigan's done it! He's absolutely done it! He's kept him in this! By the way, only 8% of you are subscribed. So if you enjoy my videos, why not subscribe? And if you already are or just became one, thank you. On Ancient, we saw how better prepared FaZe were. FaZe are going 3 players B, 1 middle and 1 A. This is probably the most default setup on Ancient and this should be no surprise. You will use the B players to either take B control or just hold it properly. And then the mid and A player alone has the goal of just holding offense and trying not to die. And so going 1 player A main, 1 mid and 1 in spawn using utility and then 2 towards B. A very common setup as well where they will just try to sniff out how FaZe plays. And here Twist uses some early middle aggression to be able to stop the mid player from ends to take it with a good flash and a smoke. And at the same time Kerrigan has pushed down B ramp together with the cave player and Face has quickly won B control and mid control. So what does this do to ends? Ends need to make a decision. Can they win back any of B or mid control or is A the best option? And here you need to understand the utility usage ends would need to just win back either bottom mid or B. And ends has a lot of utility but this will drain the utility account for ends. So they decide to rather go and wait, in hope FaZe makes a mistake. And damn do they wait for long. And we saw Nuke that this could work out to wait for FaZe to kinda get bored of waiting and then starting to push. And Ens tries to play onto this. But FaZe are not moving. And here Ens throws a fake towards A and actually sends two players to run out on the utility in hope of selling it well enough to force the B players off. And I love when you sell a fake like this and not just throw utility and then don't even you do anything on it. And here Broken Rob's clear spot kills. But just not in time as Kerrigan has turned and is already ready to run to middle when Ants jumps out of the smoke and kills him. And this might now be doable as long as they can kill the cave player. And Rain gets a 1 for 1 trade and the game is now down to a 2v3 and here again phase of 2 split up with Brokey walking solo to long, Twist coming short and Rob's coming cave. But Nurts runs back and has this Molotov lineup just to Molotov the bomb to make sure he can be safe 
and just play the time. And Robs has to save. Spawn. I wonder if Robs detected him. I don't know if he just seen him go through that double door, but perhaps he caught a glimpse. But it's all about this from Vladin's shadow advantage. Vladin's locked in that first kill on Brokey. Anything else from the Serb? Tap on that defuse. Molotov goes in to try and deny. Vladin is still fragging, and there's nothing Robs can do. The time was limited, the Molotov came in just for extra measure, and N still find the way to the round win. Yeah, just absolutely knocks them out, a little <laughs> bit of a fake, yeah. Face are now on the T side, so how are they going to win this much needed map? Ants are on the worst buy, with having 3 pistols, but Ants knows this can be good. All they need to do is to win some map control early, and here they win bottom middle control early. With this Molotov, Ants are flashes to stop face, while the rest of Ants are going 2 players B, 1 in spawn holding A, and then 2 in middle, a very default setup for more of a safe play. While face has Rops lurking outside of middle and A, and then 4 players towards B. And their goal as we can see on Rain is to take early B side control to win back some map control. They lost by losing middle. But here Ants are ready by having a rifle behind pillar and then the deagle long. This is a great bait and switch setup, but will it work? And here again, face lack of team play kicks in, but has been haunting them for most of nuke and now on ancient. With multiving the pillar, this should kick in the protocol of holding the pillar just in case a player is there. And here Nerds is able to run out of sight after the multiv hits him, and the two face players who were ramped to hold while well, they're holding utility in the hand. And Nerds can get one kill and Snapping can find one more kill. And then face does a big mistake by smoking off everything to allow Snappy to leave and stay alive. And here he's able to spam the smoke and find one more kill. I'm just amazed how bad face execute have been so far in this round. Robs is able to use his lurk to the good for his team. And here walks out of A site and is able to get to red room without being spotted. While ends are going all three players middle. Since they can always rotate quickly to wherever site face goes to. And Robs peaks middle and he should have had more kills. But he finds three players out of ends and can kill one. This is an important call to Kerrigan who now runs out to B to plant the bomb. And we enter the retake, and here FaZe has the advantage, with Ants not having a shred of utility left. Well FaZe has some, and here after planting a bomb, Kerrigan smokes ramp and Nurch tries to walk through it, just to be met by Robs, and FaZe takes the round. Dave decided to go into middle. This could really work out for Robs. This might be the perfect Actually, move for him. He's, he, if he goes to backstab the B defense, that'd be the nightmare, but he, oh, he is oh, coming from mid. He's made the right call. This could be an absolute execution from Robs. Sees the other two players, and he sees his chance to get out of there. He doesn't want to get involved against the pistols. He's going to run back, and he's going to help his in game leader. We've been missing these moments, but Robs has provided the opening for FaZe. Oh, and a smoke on B ramp. That's painful. Painful because Madden can't get involved. His teammate is so far away from it as well. Some Pius is up at red. They, they still think Rops could be around here. They still think Rops could be in the red room, but he's gone. He is long gone, but he's still, even his threat, even the thought that he could be in a position is scaring them off. And so on map point and match point, five kills between them and a grand final. This is an important one. For Ens, this would be their last ride as a full team now that Snappy is linked to Falcons. Oh, never mind. Diha is not here, so they're not even a full team. Face this round has a Tech 9 and a Galil, so this will not be ideal for them, while Ens has a full buy. Ens are going one player on A in this spot, and I will make a video during December about how to play A, but I will give you a quick rundown, since this will be crucial for this round. When the O plays A, he plays it solo since there are so many easy kills to find from main and other places, and it's why the rest of Ens are 2 middle, 2 on B, so the mid players can quickly help on A if needed. But what happens when there's a rush? Well, we will see. Face are going all 5 players to A, and this is the best time to rush A. It's only an AWP holding, and here FaZe uses a bunch of flashes to help the rest of the team to get out, and some Payas finds the first kill on Kerrigan, but for some reason he's not falling back. But opting to stay, my theory is that he did not know FaZe could already be big box, and here he dies to attack 9, not ideal. And look at this side take from FaZe. Some flashes over, a smoke donut, a smoke deep CT, and then this Molotov behind the boxes to force the AWP off, it's beautiful. And here the CT player finds rain, but Brokey quickly trades back, and we are seeing the match now go down to a 3v3. And FaZe are able to plant, since Nerd shot too soon, and Madden did not want to give away his position by spamming when he's inside the smoke. And right now Ans has one player CT, Madden close to sight, and Nerd smoked off in Donut. FaZe needs to get some kills, and here Twist start by trying to kill the player peeking Temple, but whiffs, and this is the kill FaZe needed. Madden walks out to find Twist. He was not ready, and Madden has made the round possible for Ans. Him not killing the planter was kinda worth it. But Robs as quick as ever is able to trade back, Snappy tries to trade back again, but are too far apart. And we are now seeing the team play of Ants fail. 
and Rops can pick up one more player before Nerds from the donut through the smoke is able to trade him back. And a 1v1 it's all between Ants and Face. But pause, this win is crucial for Ants since they have no loose bonus and their money is not good. So if Ants loses, they're almost forced to play overtime. Nerds uses this odd smoke to be allowed to get up in this off angle, something we saw Kerrigan do on Nuke in his 1v2. But this will not be as clean, since if Nerds wants to get up to plant or boost whatever you call it, he will have to jump and give away his position. And for Brokey, there's no point of swinging and he will just jiggle. And when Nerds jumps up, Brokey jiggles and spots him. And Brokey with a no scope has Nerds number and FaZe are allowed to stay alive for one more round at least. Coming back in through CT, nice shot, couldn't double up, couldn't get Robs, who's now considering two angles, worried about CT and Donut, and he's turning left and right and eventually gets that kill towards CT. But it's down to this, it's down to Nerds versus Brokey. Nerds looks to drag Ants forward into a grand final and he's looking for Brokey, he knows exactly where he is and the off in a close position running the clock down running his prey down and Brokey hits the no scope and the last map of this bo3 is anubis and if you thought ancient was a good match anubis will make you rethink that ants won the last round in a close 2v2 and this is first phase to take a tactical timeout and it's a dire situation Ants are starting to build a bank if they win this round, while FaZe are going into this round with no money left and one pistol and an SMG. But FaZe are on the CT side, and here these lower buys can be super strong, since Anubis has some good angles and spots for close range fights. FaZe are going 3 players middle and 2 players to B, and leaving A open. And this is done strategically, since A has so many spots T's has to clear to take it, and this means a rush is kinda useless early if Ants has the better guns, so FaZe wants to play onto this. While Ants are going 3 players to water and 2 players in the middle of B and mid to hold both. And here FaZe are fast, since waiting will be useless and they run through the smoke for the 1 for 1 trade, as well as Nerds finding one more kill before Twist is able to swing and make Nerds low. But Twist does not go after this kill, and I think most players would in this situation. You are a man down and you dink the player. But Twist is not most players, he knows FaZe has no control of any of this, meaning Nerds could be solo or have one or even two players with him and Twist opts to rather stay alive than to gamble for this kill. Robs gets mid control after his teammate dies, and he walks out after the smoke fades. And in a classic timing moment, Nerds just peeks mid when Robs turns, and Nerds with low HP is able to find one more kill. And the rest of the round is just ending on A, where Ants runs down Brokey's 5-7 and Twist. This might not have been an eventful round, but we can clearly see that FaZe are not afraid to do these crazy plays to find early advantages, or give away early advantages to Ants. Injured on that island as well, and Robs knows it, so he's gonna try and isolate him further. Knows there's one away from the pack, but Robs looks the wrong way for 5 7, and Snappy should clear him out, and he will with that MAC 10. Yeah, and they really sent that MAC 10 alone. Good spacing as well, don't wanna get caught off guard by multiple defenders. Smoke blown open, and Twist had no chance. Face are back to a tactical timeout, and here again, like all other games we have seen, Face are on the back foot. If it's them being destroyed on Nuke, having to win a 1v1 with a no scope to not let Ants win the match, and here is where FaZe locks in. And that's what this timeout is for, the extra lock in FaZe. And we will see for the rest of this game, FaZe gambits in action. FaZe are going 2 players on B, 1 in middle and 2 on A, a very common setup, while Ants are going 2 players water and 3 in middle. And here I need to ask what Brokey is doing. He gets ready to nade water, stairs, but just freezes up here and is hit big by the anti-nade thrown from Ents to this spot, while Ents takes, takes deep water control outside of A. But then something happens, and I have no idea how, on A. Broken Rops had a plan, Broken Nades later, and now it makes sense, it's done to clear stairs for Rops, so Rops can walk out of the smoke and here finds two kills, I don't know how. But here's the POV of both Ents players so you can see how this happened. And this is an amazing opening for FaZe now being up 5v3 in the last round of the half. At the same time both FaZe players on B are going con and Rain pushes out and FaZe has gotten full water control. But this is where the praise for FaZe ends. While Rain and Robs has water, FaZe gets greedy and wanting to win even more to just force Ants to make a mistake and here pushes mid as two players. Only problem is that mid is a dangerous place to swing, since the T's have so many spots to play from. And here Sunpaya scoped in finds Brokey, and look at Twist, he cannot swing and trade, since he has no idea where the rest of the T's are, and most would swing here, just like we saw in round 9. And by looking at the map, he could, but as we know Twist is more careful, and this allows Sunpaya's to walk into middle and just kill him. And here again, the AWP takes around 1 second before it can shoot again. Twist could have swung after Brokey died and gotten the trade back. 
all that work Rops did is now wasted in mid, and FaZe after winning water control loses mid control. But then Sun us. Besides, well, we don't have water control, so what if I just jump down? And here Rain can trade back, and FaZe has the man advantage again. But Rain can't get back fast enough and opts to rather play in this off angle, and it bites him in the ass. With Nerd swinging him, and winning the duel, it's now a 2v2. Faze are split up, and Ents knows this, and pushes A to find Rops use alone, while Kerrigan is trying his best to get behind Ents from water control. And Rops dies and Kerrigan is stuck in a 1v2 for the last round of the half. How will this go? Well, we are about to witness a blunder of team communication, coordination and just game sense. Kerrigan has three objectives going into this clutch. Making the fights into 1v1s, and Ents are already doing this by playing so split up. Then he needs to pick up the kit on site, and lastly, just to win the round. Kerrigan finds Madden, peeking too early, and Nurse has a nade in his hand, a Molotov. A Molotov that is thrown too late and should have been used for the bomb later, since the bomb is already ticked over 20 seconds at this time. And now into bird's eye view. The bomb is planted here, on the left side of sight, meaning Nurse should be peeking from camera and this place. But here he must either have gotten a call, and he goes to peek left as he should, but then runs back, and now he is giving Kerrigan just enough time to stick the 5 second Ninja defuse and Kerrigan in an unwinnable 1v2 does it. Oh, that's rough for Kerrigan, but he recovers. He still gets that one pick, and that Molotov has gone too deep. Now Nurse realizes, but the bomb's not even planted for him. He's got the kit. Nurse has to go to bricks, and he will. Surely he will. Surely he'll peek this before Kerrigan gets the defuse. No, I'm telling you, Kerrigan's I'm telling got you. it. Kerrigan's got the clutch. Kerrigan in full force. We are now in round 21, and damn, it's 10-10. This is the closest match we have seen from this whole beer tree. Yes, Ancient went to overtime, Enz was in the lead for most of that. But this time, it's dead on the same score and everything. And this round is crucial for Enz. Their economy is not looking good. And going into this round, they have to win it. Or they will be on a weaker buy. And allow FaZe a round 12 and match point. While if FaZe wins, they will be able to buy for the next few rounds without having to take a bad buy before overtime. FaZe are going 4 players in middle and 1 water. But one of the mid players will later join in water, while Rain in water takes deep water control close to A, and plays in this corner right here, that is super good to catch any CTs over peeking in water off guard. We saw Enz use this spot a lot, while Enz is one player on A taking early control of A main and water, and then two players in middle in this setup, so one player can fall back to A fast in case the A player dies or needs help, while the other mid player will just be a regular mid player, and then the last two players on B. Ends the side since A is quiet to let the player between mid and A to go and push out of doors so the mid smoke face throws don't take away too much information from them. But face uses this Molotov to clear it out and have one bridge control. Ends wins back bridge control with a smoke since face don't really need it. Since Rain is pushing towards B and Con, all they need is for him to make some noise and then they can explode out on B site. So they use this leaving bridge control open to make sure Enz kind of focus that and is a little bit too focused on that. Faze smokes Temple and Rain hopes that this is enough to allow him to take on without any problems. And here he lazy clears it and Nurse is able to find his kill on Rain. And Faze, two other players outside of B are too slow to capitalize on his death right now. But Snoppy Backside decides his best option is to play Backside safe and hide and here twist as fast as possible, gets to default site and kills Nurse who was not ready. And this is a problem, Snappy is the only player Enz has left on B site. And in a panic, he peeks out in hope to trade Nerds, and Twist finds this kill as well. Right now, Ants are two players on A and one in middle, while Face are two players on B and one in water. How can Ants win this round? Well, Ants could now save to have a better shot at next round, but Ants decides to go for it. And this is not ideal. Face water player will make sure his two side players only need to focus CT and Temple. And yes, a flank can be scary, but it's almost too late in this round for a flank to be effective. But there are some mistakes from Face. They are super slow at planting the bomb, and this makes the end's flank so much better. Since FaZe has been around 15 seconds late, other problem is FaZe positioning in this round. They are going two players in con, and then Twist alone backside. So Twist can't be traded, and sits himself up for a 1 for 1 trade. Not ideal. And then the two other FaZe players will be able to trade each other, but this door is not giving you a lot of chances of fighting. But Ants has no utility left, and FaZe are just run down. Twist finds a 1 for 1 trade, and when he dies, Brokey wants to find an opening, and here the flank gets him, and Rops can't do anything in the 1v2. B main, Twist is holding, and what a round he is having. Twist gets another, but it's just onto this. Madden coming back in, pairs up with Flatten, and it's Madden with a headshot. What an important round for Madden again. The game is still in a tie with 11-11, but Enz is still under the looming threat that the economy 
will plummet as bad as the crypto and NFT market if they lose. And that's not ideal going into the last round and match point for face if they lose. And remember, Ants could have won this game on Ancient, so they have the most pressure out of both teams in the semi-final. Face goes 4 players in water and 1 player outside of B and middle, while Ants are going 2 players on A, 2 on B and 1 player between A and middle. And here Ants nades towards water stairs, but throws it shorter since they understand the nade for stairs was too late and this is a good find and does around 30 damage to Brokey. But FaZe wants to use this water control now that Rain got both bridge, window and con control. And here FaZe are going to take the fight to Ants on A. And why not? But Ants seem to be ready, with Madden looking into the wall to be anti-flash in the setup. But there is a downside to the setup and it's a classic idea of most positions that looks good. Let me tell you. The whole idea is that you make a position, theory craft it and you tell yourself how is this position being countered? And with this position you're gonna say if they don't flash, but then you're gonna ask well why wouldn't they flash? And in this case with an anti-flash setup, what happened if face were to be a little bit silly and just peek without a flash and that's what Rops does. And so you understand if Rops fails this kill, face most likely loses the round since Madden will then be ready to kill the second player trying to trade. So Rops just walking up here have a lot relying on this kill and Rops find it. Madden feeling the pressure tries to get a trade or two. But here finds one kill before Brokey can kill him and both A players are now dead and this will force the mid player to rotate and leave mid open. And from Ants POV has to be an A execute since FaZe just got 2 kills but FaZe are not running out and rather waiting since usually CTs would start to push the T's to find the trade and equalize the position. But Ants do not. And this allows FaZe to slow down and just wait and allows Ants to take back A main control. And then they are waiting for someone to get impatient. And this starts with Sunpayas wanting to take water and just the timing of this when Rops walks out and then back again to his corner to hide and when Sunpayas walks out is crazy. And here Sunpayas clears the corner but not enough and Rops can find this kill and it's a 4v2 for FaZe. And the rest of Ants are now pushing now that they need a kill and here FaZe cleans up the round to hit match point first. Oh and Sunpayas perhaps the impatience. The impatience could cost him his life here. He's checking for Robs, but even if he commits to it, he should be traded down. He looks the wrong way. Robs punishes him. There's the kill from Brokey, and it's just Nerds left alone. FaZe have got it first. They've got Map and Series point first. And this looks like a team that are destined for the grand final. And a nail biter of a game is won by FaZe, who went on to win the whole event. I made a video about it here. This game is something I will recommend everyone to watch. You will learn so much from it to how to play under pressure, clutching, calling, positioning and more. It's a long one but worth the watch. Thank you for watching and here are two videos YouTube told me you would like. Bye.